Jen breaks free, we learn more of Agatha's backstory, including what happened to her son Nicholas Scratch, and we get a full-on Wiccan reveal, plus we learn that it was Billy all along. What's going on, Marvelites? Today, we are talking about Agatha all along, episode 8, Follow Me, My Friend, to Glory at the End, and episode 9, Maiden Mother Crone. First and foremost, before we dive into the episodes, let's give it up for everyone involved in this show. This show is easily and arguably one of the best Marvel Disney Plus shows that they've made so far. And uh, again, honestly, quite possibly one of the best Marvel live action projects ever made to date. The storytelling and the writing was absolutely incredible and everything was truly brought to life by the costumes, the practical sets and effects, and of course from the actors bringing all of these characters to life. I honestly don't remember this much fun discourse and like theorizing with a community online about a Marvel television show, with the exception recently of X-Men 97, since really WandaVision, to be honest. So with that being said, as we dive into episode eight, one of the greatest moments and biggest things that we learn all revolves around Jen. From what we know from previous episodes, Jen has been bound and unable to use her magic for at least a century. Now from episode three, we learned that there was some situation with a doctor where she was tricked and she believes that she was bound without any magic. That has kind of led myself and others to theorize that she really just psychologically bounded herself and that she's always been able to use her powers. And to a degree that was true, but in episode eight, we learned that Agatha was paid off by that doctor. So this entire time, Jen has been bound unknowingly by Agatha, all for Agatha just to make a quick buck essentially. But we see Jen unbound herself. That scene, let me tell you, was super powerful, not only from the standard kind of theme and trope that's been going through not only WandaVision, but also Agatha all along of dealing with grief and processing through trauma and you know how it affects the people around you. Not only was it super impactful from Jen just releasing her trauma and processing through that, but also there's clearly a cultural significance to this as well. Jen is obviously a black witch and she was bound by a white person. And you could see it through Sashir's acting which again, she's done an amazing job knowing her primarily as like a comedic actor. The fact that she's primarily played a dramatic role within the series, she absolutely crushed it. Clearly though, there's a cultural significance there that is super important of a black woman or even a black person overcoming this power that the white man or white woman in this case has been holding over them. But right after that, Jen basically disappears from the road because she got what she wanted. And then we see Billy process his grief and trauma. Billy was brought into the world, we don't know exactly how, of course through Wanda's magic with his twin brother Tommy. They grew up very quickly and then before you know it, his life was taken away from him and then he reincarnated himself into another body who happened to be a little bit older than him. So one, just all of that trauma right there and then trying to figure out who he is because he has very little or no memories from Westview. So we've seen also Billy slash William have these identity issues within the series, and he's clearly holding on to a lot of trauma. Now, Agatha helps Billy essentially process his grief and his trauma. And we learn that Billy has been holding on to Tommy. Tommy is not out in another body just yet because Billy has been holding him within himself. So Agatha helps Billy process his trauma. Billy was ultimately able to go through that and release Tommy as he was able to find a, a young boy that Tommy could go ahead and reincarnate. And they kind of gave us a little bit of an Easter egg that it was most definitely going to be the body that Tommy's going to reincarnate because they had that close up of a sneaker that was on his feet. And um, obviously we know that Tommy is also known as Speed, kind of very similar to Wanda's brother, Quicksilver, and you know has very similar powers to that. Even on this shoe, if you didn't notice, there was a little bit of like an S kind of looking shape, probably indicating the name of Speed and or that this is going to be the boy that Tommy is going to reincarnate for sure. So that's something that we've all been kind of waiting for, although we did not see Tommy himself, but the other big reveal in regards to Billy is that we learn that this whole thing was made up by Billy. Just like Wanda created that entire hex through her powers and her mind, Billy created this entire hex, including everything that was in the Witch's Road 
through his mind. And we learn that after he returns home, he goes back into his room and he starts looking at all the stuff, which we've already seen in previous episodes. And I really loved as Billy was looking through all of these different things within his room that alluded to the road, that they had flashbacks from previous episodes that pretty much laid it out entirely for us that Billy was in charge and created this whole thing the entire time. It was clearly Billy all along. I think the thing that is most interesting is that Agatha pretty much knew the entire time once we watch episode nine and we kind of see when she had the all of the witches down in her basement and then Sharon Davis, who? is like, what's that? And points to the door beneath them. And Agatha was like, what? This, this is not supposed to be happening. And then Billy comes down, runs down the stairs. After everyone goes through, she kind of looks at the camera and smirks. You know, it seems like Agatha knew the entire time when she said to Billy at one point, I forget which episode, like you have the same tell as your mother. The tell was that they unknowingly can create these alternate realities using their minds and not and not know it. <laughs> and then after Billy disappeared from the road, we're just left with Agatha to deal with her trauma. Once she gets out, we have that whole thing with Rio slash death. Now, earlier in the episode, she essentially made a deal with death saying that she will get Billy to surrender himself to death because death cannot kill someone from what we can understand. She just collects the bodies slash souls. Now, she's wanting Billy's soul because he basically messed up the entire balance of life because he reincarnated himself right like death was going to take that soul but was unable to because now it's in a living body so agatha made a deal that basically said hey i will get billy to surrender himself and if i'm able to do that you will leave me alone and basically not only that when i do die i do not want to see your face and you can kind of tell like once Agatha said that, like Rio was very distraught. Even later, after Agatha gets off of the road and is back in her backyard, essentially, Rio at one point even says, like, why don't you want me anymore? And at that point, Death is pretty much pissed off because she needs a soul slash a body to take at this point. Billy's not there, so she's ready to take Agatha. And then Agatha eventually is able to survive with the help of Billy and talk about one heck of a reveal. It was just a dope way to see him kind of take care of business beforehand. We didn't know what was actually happening. And then he slowly kind of glides himself down to the ground in his full out costume. And by the way, props to the costume designers and how they did his costume because that is a pretty darn accurate comic book representation of Billy. And uh, I absolutely love it. They crushed it. Now, Billy ends up allowing Agatha to siphon some of his power and pretty much goes against the theory that I had that Agatha is not able to control her powers and also goes against kind of the other thing that I was thinking they were going to do, which was make Agatha kind of like into an anti-hero or anti-heroine for the most part. They did not do that. She's a full-on villain with a soft spot for kids. <laughs> However, I also think that this was part of Agatha's plan in a way. When Billy surrendered himself Agatha's like yeah go ahead take him right and she's pretty much ready to go again I think she's a full-on villain she's all about herself then obviously we saw that Billy telepathically talked with Agatha and knowing that she probably has a soft spot for kids said something about how Nikki died and at that point that's kind of like what broke Agatha and was like I'm not gonna let another kid die on my watch basically and she surrendered herself to death which was very kind of like poetic right like death's kiss but I don't think that again death necessarily killed Agatha in the kiss Agatha essentially tried to siphon death's powers and knowing from episode one that Agatha cannot take Death's powers, that being because Death is a cosmic entity and she's just way too strong for Agatha to withhold any of those powers. I do think that that was part of Agatha's plan was to have Billy say that he was going to surrender himself because the deal that Agatha made with Death at the beginning of episode eight was that if he surrenders himself to you, that you leave me alone for however many years that I live and when I do die, that I do not see your face. That came true because Billy surrendered himself. And even though Agatha did die, Rio did not take her soul with her because now Agatha, as we saw in episode nine, 
is floating around as a ghost. And we do know, too, that Ryo hates ghosts. Within this episode, too, I want to point out like the amazingness of them featuring Westview residents again. Not only when like Ryo was fighting with Agatha and then they, they zoomed out and saw everyone looking and they're like, God damn, we gotta, we're dealing with this shit again? But then ultimately in episode nine, we continue to learn that Agatha is just honestly a straight up villain that just continues to build to that theory and that she's not actually a good person. But obviously we learned more about Agatha's backstory and her son, Nicholas Scratch. But we also learned that she's been buying time this entire time, which was alluded to beginning of episode eight. At the beginning of episode nine, we see Agatha in attempt to process to give birth to her son, Nicholas Scratch, and right before that happens, we see death appear, and you can see Agatha plead with her that she's not ready, like, please don't take him. Because of their past relationship and Rio loves Agatha, she gave her something that she probably wasn't supposed to do, which was give them more time together and not take Nicholas's soul. Now, I also believe that not only was death there to take Nikki, but was also there to take Agatha. I'm assuming that she's been killing witches prior to the birth of Nick. Back in episode eight, Rio tells Agatha that you've been given something that no one else has ever gotten, which we learn is time basically to stave off death. And even though we know that death is going to come, she's been able to kind of stave that off by essentially providing bodies to Rio, which is what she did to continue to save herself and Nikki from death. Now, the reason why I think Rio was not only there for Nikki, but also Agatha was because one, if death was there just for Agatha and took her, Nikki would have died. He was there all by himself in the woods and ultimately left with no one to tend to him. He ultimately would have died and then Rio would have came for him eventually. We also know that Rio came back in episode one to come for Agatha because it's been three years that Agatha has been in and under that spell that we saw her at in episode one. And so she wasn't able to provide any bodies or souls to death. So now that it's been a while, death finally has come for Agatha. However, Agatha essentially makes a deal and says, look, let me get my powers back and I'll give you some more bodies, which is exactly what was her plan. She brought the entire coven to her basement and she sang the witch's road and was hoping that, you know, she was going to end up getting them super angry and pissed off and was going to siphon their powers. Ultimately, that never happened because a hex was formed via Billy and they actually went down the road. Even later, we learned that that was her plan after Billy was kind of distraught and he's talking with the ghost of Agatha and he's like, because I created this whole thing in my mind, I actually killed those people. And Agatha kind of reasons with him in, in some sort of a weird way that <laughs> he really didn't. Like Lilia made the choice to stay back and behind to have herself killed. Alice was actually killed by Agatha and that he did actually kill Sharon Davis for the most part. And Agatha was like, look, really at the end of the day, I was going to end up killing all of them. That was my plan, bringing them into my basement. You just happened to save at least one of them because we know that Jen again climbed out of the ground and flew away. That basically leads us into and learn more about the Ballad of the Witch's Road. We learn that the Witch's Road was really just a song that Nick and Agatha made up to help them as they were traveling from town to town. And then they turned it into this Witch's Road, which ultimately became uh, one of the best cons, I guess, in history, <laughs> as Agatha conned hundreds, if not thousands of witches to siphon and steal their powers. But now we are left with the ghost of Agatha Harkness and Billy. Clearly, they are teaming up to go find Tommy. Now, I really love that they're going on this take here of Agatha as a mentor. I had mentioned this before in previous videos. This is really Agatha's true comic book claim to fame is that she's a mentor to these powerful beings. And in the comics, she was a mentor to the Scarlet Witch, which I think is awesome. I love that they're going on this take. And in fact, we even saw Agatha be a ghost as she was still mentoring Scarlet Witch within the 2015 Scarlet Witch run where they go down the witch's road. Tell me your thoughts about these last two episodes, the entire series, what you'd like to see in the future, anything about it. Put them down below in the comments if you've made it this far in the video. I truly appreciate you watching and taking the time to stay this long in the video. If you want more content just like this, please hit that like and subscribe button down below. And if you want to support me even more, 
feel free to join one of the membership levels down below. And until the next video, Excelsior.